It's no secret that I haven't been the biggest fan of Remix. I saw the patterns and was excited to buy what they were doing, but there was a lot of implementation details and just overall developer experience stuff I didn't love. That said, over the last two years, they have made a ton of progress, and I am genuinely really hyped with some of the things that they have coming going forward. With the amount that Next.js has changed and moved into its own crazy direction, it's nice to have other frameworks focused on a more minimal approach while still getting some of those same benefits from React and more importantly, server components. So what does Remix have in store and why am I getting so much more excited about it again? Well, let's take a look. So the first big change I wanna talk about is what Mark Dalgish has been working on, Vite. This is a huge change. Previously, Remix was built on top of ES Build itself. So when you were using Remix, you didn't have access to much of the plugin ecosystem that already existed in communities like Vite and Webpack and Rollup and all of these other places. Even when Vite was made, they went out of their way to use ES Build during dev, but to use Rollup for production so you could still have access to that huge plugin ecosystem. Because Remix didn't use an existing bundler that had a plugin architecture like Vite or Rollup or Webpack, most of the implementations for things like SVG loading had to be custom rolled into Remix itself. To be fair, when Remix was started, Vite wasn't really a thing, so it makes sense that it took a bit to get there. But this is an effort that was largely led by Mark Dalgish. For those who don't know Mark, he was one of the creators of CSS modules, and he also made Vanilla Extract, which is the first TypeScript-focused style system for building type-safe CSS and styles in your applications. Really cool stuff. Mark being part of Remix has restored a ton of my excitement for the project, and I couldn't be more hyped to see the impact that he has over time. So. Vite now works. It's in a surprisingly good and stable state. And if I was to ever use Remix, I would certainly be using it with Vite. But that's not the main thing we're here to talk about, as exciting as it is. What we're here to talk about is server components. Server components are a big change for Remix because Remix is very focused on route level data loading, which means that if I need data in a component, I don't specify in the component, hey, I need this data. Instead, I specify at the route. So when I need data for a product that I'm showing on an e-commerce page, rather than the component saying what data it needs, the route of slash product slash ID in brackets would have a loader specified on it that gets the data that anything on that page would need. The problem with this is there's now a non-deterministic attachment between the components that need the data and the route that actually loads it. So you have a component that needs data, like the comment section on a video or the details for a product. Those types of things required that every page that mounted the component also had the loader present. Or you would just go back to doing it the old school React way where you have a use effect or a React query to do the data fetching. This pattern is not particularly composable, and that composability is the beauty of React, the ability to have a component that has everything it needs in it. You just mount it with whatever props it expects and things behave how you would expect them to. The, the problem with this approach was that if you compose these things on client and you had a component that needed data, that once it got the data, it mounted another component that needed data. And once it got it mounted, you get the idea. Waterfalls were a real problem. And if your user has to connect to the server, get authenticated, the server then has to go get the data and then send it back to the user. And you do that three to five times, it's real bad. This waterfall problem is very real, and Remix was built to fight back hard. The focus of Remix on route level loading was to make sure each route has one place the data comes from one time, and if a component needs data, then it better be mounted on the right route that has that data. But that's the dangerous part. A component could say, I need this data, but Remix isn't necessarily going to give it there. And as a result, there has been a lot of weird design decisions I didn't love in Remix, like the outright refusal to support type safe data loading for a long time because they knew that the relationship wasn't deterministic enough. And if you use the type of your loader in a component that didn't actually have that loader because it was on a different route, everything fell apart. The result of this was Remix looked really good in these single file examples where you have your backend loader and your front end components all in one file. But as soon as you have an actual dynamic code base with lots of components that have lots of differing data requirements, this model starts to fall apart. The Remix team had a lot of concerns with server components because they kind of go back to that waterfall model where each component can request data itself and that can result in another component that needs to request data, et cetera, et cetera. And they hate waterfalls. But there's a huge difference between the waterfalls of old React and new React. Old React's waterfalls happened on the client. So every time a component mounted a component that needed more data, that component had to talk to the server. And that gap was a huge part of why waterfalls were so bad. Server-side waterfalls, however, significantly less bad. If a database query blocks the next database query, you go from two milliseconds to three and a half, not when it blocks on the client and you go from half a second to one second. Huge, 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 huge difference. As such, the composability of server components makes the waterfall trade-off not 
as big of a deal. But more importantly, it is a really, really good developer experience. And it took a bit, but it seems like the Remix team is coming around to it. They'd previously said they were unsure and likely not going to do server components for a while. But this proposal on GitHub, as well as the tweet that Ryan announced it in, is that they are officially committed to getting server components into Remix. I am so hyped about this. Genuinely. For me, the strengths of Remix are the super minimal nature of the framework, combined with the focus on performance and web standards. A lot of the latter has happened in Next.js now, but Next is not minimal. I will never pretend that Next is a minimal framework. It does a lot of crazy shit. And I see an exciting future where Remix becomes the go-to minimal framework to showcase what V plus server components looks like. I really want that. I want a good, simple, focused, minimal implementation of server components that uses standard technologies like V that I can use to showcase the server component patterns, deep dive into how they work and all these types of things. As long as Next is the only way to really use server components, it is really hard for me to teach what server components are and how they differ from Next.js itself. I really hope Remix team makes progress on this and I'm excited to see where it goes because the combination of this with V makes it a much more compelling framework that I'm excited to take a look at. That said, probably not gonna use their actions or data loader stuff anytime soon. It just, I don't care about route level data fetching. It doesn't matter that much anymore. Making your DX that much worse just to guarantee every request to your server has all of the data responded immediately. That doesn't feel like a worthwhile trade-off to me. And the new model is just so compelling that I don't care anymore. I'm excited for server components in Remix. And I think you guys should be too. If you want to hear more about how the different data fetching and data loading patterns work in all these frameworks, I'll pin a video in the corner all about SSR and how this stuff works. If you've already seen that, there's one below you might like instead. Appreciate y'all a ton. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, nerds.